This video was sponsored by AMC's The Walking Dead World Beyond. Welcome to Rick's Walking Dead Emporium. Thanks for having me. It is, uh, rough out there these days. So what you selling? Oh, uh, you know, stuff and things. Oh, very descriptive. I guess I'll just look around. Oh, this. This is very interesting. I haven't seen anything like this before. Do, do you mind telling me what this is? Coral! internet welcome to film theory hey coral what's glenn's favorite restaurant dad p please don't popeyes popeyes coral ah oh, rick you might be gone but your memes shamble on like an undead walker except that brings up a really important question where is rick grimes i think everyone who started watching the walking dead always assumed that at some point rick would have to die in some massive act of heroism he was our favorite southern sheriff the protagonist of the whole show in a series where everyone was at constant risk of biting the big one or getting bit by the big one more accurately and season nine episode Episode 5, What Comes After, seemed like it was gonna be that moment. Our leader Rick, after losing his wife, his son, his friends, heck, even his own humanity during his journey, is mortally wounded and facing down a marching zombie onslaught headed straight to the survivor's settlement. I mean, this is it. Nine and a half seasons in the making, this was his climax. He makes the hard choice to blow up a bridge, and him along with it. The plan works, the zombies are thwarted, Rick is blown away, but she Shocking everyone, he doesn't die. He's instead airlifted away in a mysterious helicopter via some sort of bizarre trade negotiated by former villain Jadis. I have a B, not an A, I never had an A. He's hurt, but he's strong, can you help him? I warned you there'd be consequences if you tried something. Not a trick, not anymore. I'm trying to save a friend, a friend who saved me. I have something for you now. We have a deal? Do we have a deal? So why am I talking about this now? This is old news, as far as The Walking Dead's concerned. We're already a season beyond this moment. Well, first, the mystery of the helicopter people is probably the most significant mystery of The Walking Dead franchise outside of, you know, what started the zombie outbreak in the first place. And even that one might already be solved if series creator Robert Kirkman is to be believed, since he gave us these two words on Twitter, Space Spore. So with Rick being the main character of the original series, what happens to him is a pretty important question, especially when he officially has a trilogy of movies coming out to tell the rest of his story. But the why now question also relates back to this. The announcement of a third series, another branch on the Walking Dead media franchise. Obviously the original is still going, and honestly stronger than it's ever been with its ongoing battle against the Whispers in Virginia. Then we have the spin-off slash prequel of Fear the Walking Dead, which started with a group of survivors in Los Angeles, California, and is currently following them through Texas. And this month, The Walking Dead World Beyond joins the fray. And from what little we know about World Beyond, this one is actually significantly different. According to what the creator teams have said about this new series, World Beyond takes place a full decade after the zombie outbreak, and it focuses on the Gen Z teens who have known nothing but life with zombies. And can I just say if the Gen Zers in World Beyond don't refer to themselves as Generation Z for zombie, that is a missed opportunity, guys. It's apparently a limited series event consisting of just two 10-episode seasons, then it's done. It's a more optimistic, upbeat show, more adventure than horror, focused around, quote, a heroic group of teens sheltered from the dangers of the post apocalyptic world who leave the safety of the only home they've ever known and embark on a cross-country journey to find the one man who can possibly save the world. But look again at some of that trailer footage I've been showing. You notice the helicopter? You see that three ring symbol? It's the same group that abducted Rick and Jadis. In short, this new series seems to be the linchpin in the ongoing mystery around Rick and the helicopter people. And if I have any hope of solving who these people are before it's revealed in the shows, now is my time to strike. And 
And that, my friends, is the why now. Also because I want to do this video back in March, but then COVID hit, but then the series got delayed, and then, hey, look, The Walking Dead wanted to sponsor this episode, so let's just get into it. The Walking Dead at this point is basically the MCU, with clues to this mystery being sprinkled across all its different avenues. In the first episode of Season 5 of Fear the Walking Dead, Al is attacked by a very special zombie, which is saying a lot in a franchise that kills these things off by the boatload. The literal boatload sometimes. What makes this particular walker special is that he's wearing a weird type of body armor. Black vertical stripes. It's very slimming. When Al checks the zombie's pockets, she finds this. A series of maps and transparent overlays, all with the three ring markings of the helicopter people, and all labeled with three letters. C-R-M. Maps and overlays that directly parallel what we see briefly in one of the trailers for Walking Dead World Beyond. A map of New York, and again, the three letters C-R-M. Four episodes later in Fear of the Walking Dead, we actually get to speak to one of the helicopter people, Isabel. And she tells us, well, not a lot, but a, but a bit more. We know that CRM is the group's name, that their wacky outfits are filled with wires in order to be bite-proof, and that the place I'm from, I'm not gonna tell you where it is, I'm not gonna tell you what it's called, but there is something I will tell you. If they figure out how to read the map, it makes what we have, what we're working towards, vulnerable. This is about the future and rebuilding what we all once had. So with all this talk about the future, it seems like the CRM group is working on a cure, or potentially creating children who are immune to the zombie virus. And I do mean creating children. You see, that's how gene therapy works, where in very rough terms, new genes are added to a patient's cells to replace missing or malfunctioning genes. If done early enough in an embryo's development, the gene transfer can occur in all cells of the developing embryo, leading to permanent changes that are passed down to subsequent generations. In other words, in a world where we know pretty much everyone is infected by the zombie virus, space spore, whatever, change needs to happen at the cellular level, affecting each and every cell so that humanity can get back to, as Isabel said, the world it once had. Gene therapy might just be the only solution, but for it to work, it has to be in children. Children, I say. Children like the ones we see living with the helicopter people. Children like the ones that we're going to be spending a lot of time with throughout World Beyond. And everything changed. The end of the world was our beginning. That line from the trailer may wind up being more literal than they expected. In fact, these aren't just any children. They share a common trait, a common bond. Looking at some of the earliest released footage from the series, the group has a special name. We are the Endlings. Sounds like the sort of name I would give a special science project out to solve the world's genetic crisis. This focus on genetics and gene-based solutions to the world's zombie problem isn't just me grasping at straws here either. Let's go back to what Jada says to the helicopter operator before they pick up her and Rick. I have a B, not an A. He's hurt, but he's strong. Can you help him? Clearly, Jadis is training humans with the CRM for supplies. We see her eating from a can bearing the three ring logo, as well as her eventual escape. And this trading system is somehow tied to the division of A's and B's. In season nine, episode three, Jadis is told by the helicopter people via walkie talkie that she needs an A. What will it take? An A. She apparently gave him Heath, who disappeared back in Season 7. She tried to give him Negan before he managed to escape. And she almost gave him Father Gabriel. But what does all of this mean? What is the CRM looking for? What is this division of A's versus B's? Well, it appears that anyone marked as an A is 1, a strong leader, and 2, needs to be recently bitten or about to turn. In Season 8, Episode 6, Jadis puts Rick in a shipping container with the letter A. Later that season, Episode 14, she does it again with Negan. In both cases, she tries to get a zombie to bite them, but they escape before she manages to do it. But it's Father Gabriel who gives us our biggest clue. Jadis originally had him pegged as a bee before he stands up to her. She offers him a chance to escape via the helicopter, and he turns it down. Whatever this is, I can't do it. I have to tell Rick. And all this time, I thought you were a bee. This shows a strength of will that both Negan and Rick share, putting him solidly in the A category. Next we see him, Season 9, Episode 4, Gabriel, the newly deemed A, is also so tied up and ready for the zombie bites. There's only one place left for me to go, and you're the price of admission. So an A is a strong-willed person who's newly bitten, someone who will fight off the infection for as long as possible. The way I see it, they get bit and are immediately carried off in the helicopter. Because they're strong-willed A's, they fight off the infection for as long as possible, allowing the CRM enough time to fly them to their walled-off protected community to do whatever experimentation or observation they need of the newly infected individuals. They're looking for the genetic code 
code to break this case wide open, and they need the A's to do it. But there's more. At World Beyond's New York Comic Con panel last October, Chief Content Officer Scott Gimple revealed that the CRM's three-ringed logo is representative of a network of three communities united in rebuilding society. Quote from him, We've seen that three-circle symbol. Those three circles, and I'm saying it here, represent three different civilizations that are bound and entwined in some ways, and in some ways very, very different. End quote. This led many to believe that the three letters of CRM relate to the three communities or the states that they're found in. I actually disagree. We see from Isabel in Fear the Walking Dead that this is an incredibly secret organization, using coded maps to disguise their location. We learn that team members who deviate from their mission must be wiped out, and that the CRM comes complete with reclamation teams that eliminate any unauthorized individual who even has a hint of what their secret operation might be. So to think that they would create a cute name from their initials like some sort of post-apocalyptic in sync seems a little out of character. No, based on their strict code and technological strength, I'd say that this is more of a military operation, with the M as militia, or military, and the CR as some sort of general reference to the overall group, like city reclamation, capital reestablishment, civic republic. You see, in a leaked shot from set, we see these words, civic republic, Omaha, Portland. It appears to be the same stage where we see Iris, our main character, speaking in the world beyond footage, even down to the reference to Monument Day. It's called Monument Day because we are all monuments to the past. CRM, Civic Republic Military, or Militia, one of the two. But perhaps the biggest question is where? I started this episode talking about Rick and his future, so knowing that he was taken by the CRM group, where was he taken to? I want you to live. Don't chase this story. Do not try to find me. Going to have to give that one a big old negatory there, Izzy. Like Al, I just gotta chase the story. So we know that whatever CRM is, they're gonna be spread across the country. We've already seen their helicopters appearing in Virginia for The Walking Dead and Texas for Fear the Walking Dead. And we know it's three separate communities. Based on early footage, the World Beyond kids are starting their journey at a CRM facility in Nebraska. Notice that she's speaking at Nebraska State University, the logo on his sweatshirt, and just a whole lot of NSU imagery throughout the trailer. This is confirmed in a later trailer when they say, This thing we're doing going cross country is big. And then looking at a map of New York. Nebraska to New York? Certainly a cross country journey. Going back to that leaked image of Iris speaking at Monument Day, we can reasonably assume that the second ring of the Civic Republic is Portland, Oregon. It says right there on the banner. But for ring number three, I think that's somewhere different. I think it's where Rick was taken. You see, a teaser for the first Walking Dead movie has already started to be released, and with it comes a pretty cool easter egg. A helicopter flies off to a city in the distance. Notice the silhouette of that city? It's the skyline of Philadelphia. You see that sloping building right there? It's probably the most unique of the bunch. That's the FMC Tower. Tall pointy one? That's one Liberty Place, Philly's first skyscraper. And probably most notably, that really tall collection right there? It's the Comcast Technology Center. So it looks like Rick has gotten himself a one-way ticket to a zombie cure with a side of cheesesteak. So there you have it, my friends. My predictions for the future of the Walking Dead universe. The CRM, or Civic Republic Military, an organization based in Omaha, Portland, and Philadelphia, is gonna be doing genetic therapy research using children and an AB demarcation system in adults to try and find a cure for the zombie outbreak. They're not quite bad guys. I mean, they are working on a cure to save the world, but they're extreme in their methods in a gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet sort of way, which in turn leads many to question their motives. Iris's father, the one they're searching for in the world beyond, is some sort of genetic scientist. And the big reveal at the end of the two-season event will be that the children were the solution to saving the world the entire time, hidden inside their genetic code. Meanwhile, when we rejoin Rick in the movies, it'll be in the third CRM facility located in Pennsylvania. So, what do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? The bummer is, if I'm right, everyone's just gonna write this theory off as, oh, this was a sponsored video, so they told you, when in actuality, that would have been dumb of them. No, I just did a bunch of research and feel really good about the conclusions that we reached today. They're based in science, they're based in in-universe lore, and quite frankly, all the info that the creators of these shows are spilling out to us just shows that it pays to pay attention to all parts of a fascinating and carefully plotted out universe like this one. So now, all that's left is for us to tune into the premiere of World Beyond and see how immediately wrong I am. Feel free to come back here and rub it in my face. Until those reveals happen, or until my predictions get spoiled beyond belief, remember, it's all just a theory. A film theory. Thanks to AMC The Walking Dead World Beyond for sponsoring this video. And cut.